Good morning, Mount Olive. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. Uh, before we uh, start our devotion, let's go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we want to thank you for all you do for us. We want to thank you for your provision, Father, for your safety, or that you watch over us each and every day. Father, we know that there are several that Lord, have been struck by illness and, and so many deaths that have been reported, Father, we ask for comfort and peace during these times, that you will please touch those families, Lord, please give them um, comfort and peace, Lord, that you please touch all those requests that have been uplifted, those that are sick and are going to surgery, Father, we ask for your many blessings on them, Lord, please be with our little church by the road, Father, continue to bless us as we continue to put out your word, Father, that the lost will come and seek you. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're following up on Brother TJ's uh, sermon on Sunday, I believe, in um, uh, almost a precursor to Easter and getting our mind right for when we really, you know, take in what this holiday means to us, uh, what uh, we can expect uh, to see God move in our lives during this time as we learn more and more about Him. Uh, it's been it's been good study for all of us. Uh, so we will go ahead and uh, share some of the verses that we have heard. Um, one of those, um, I call it the come and see um, quote. And the come and see quote, I think, is one of the, the most impactful uh, verses that Brother TJ brought out on Sunday. Uh, as he called the resurrection, it's the linchpin for all believers, uh, for the Christian faith. If it wasn't for the resurrection, Christ rising from the dead, we really have no hope. We don't really have a, um, a faith in Jesus Christ to, to say that he has promised us um, an everlasting life if we believe in him. That is the big uh, linchpin to our faith. Uh, Brother TJ uh, started us out in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. In other words, by which also ye are saved. So he preached unto the Corinthians uh, the gospel that Christ was crucified. Uh, that he was buried, he rose again on the third day. Those people believed on him and were saved. And if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. You believed in these things, and that is why you were saved. Well, we really kind of even look and, and go back to Matthew 28 to say, hey, what is Paul actually preaching? Matthew 28, verse 5, this is the come and see verses. It says of the two Marys on Easter morning, uh, going to the tomb to uh, anoint the body of Jesus. And they come and the stone had already been rolled away and an angel was actually sitting on the stone. And when they uh, look and see the angel in verse five says, and the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. That is the most impactful verse uh, uh, that we'll hear. You know, if it wasn't for that one uh, event that happened, um, our, our faith would, would be for naught. And we kind of ask ourselves, well, Lord, I, I know I believe that, and I know I really have came to being a Christian because of certain things. And Brother T.J., you know, really even called on me during the service. It really made me think, you know, uh, and I did go through this in my Christian walk, was exactly why do I believe um, in Jesus Christ? And, um, you know, I was a preacher's kid, and actually I was the grandchild of a pastor. So needless to say, we always went to church whenever the doors were open. Uh, I was telling my boys, you know, you always went to Sunday school, you went to morning service, you went to evening service, Wednesday night prayer meeting, and then Saturday regular meeting service. So we were in church a whole lot. 
And he said, the reason I go to church and believe in Jesus was because of my mom and dad's faith. We have to ask ourselves, is that really what it is? Is it because I, you know, if all my friends to youth group and I, be, I became a Christian because I really kind of thought to do that was to be a part of the youth group? Or is it because, hey, we want a social time with people in our community. So we go to church and meet those in our community uh, and have a good social time. But you know what? God really wants more of us than just what our relationships were with him through our parents, through other people that we know. It is basically a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And, and God wants a relationship with you. He wants a personal, intimate relationship. And why do you believe the things that you do? You need to get to know God and ask yourself, are you really a child of God? Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? And if, he, if you have done that, let God work in you during your prayer and study. You know, envision yourselves being in some of the um, situations that we read about in the Bible. What can you learn from those to say, Lord, speak to my heart, that as in this parable, what are you trying to tell us? Can you see yourself in there? And tell God in prayer, tell God what your thoughts are, your fears, your needs. There are so many things that uh, I like when Brother Tommy says, you know, you kind of go and just talk to him as, as your dad, as a normal person, not big flowery prayer, or, but basically just to lean into his love because he cares for you. We get to know God in a personal, intimate manner. We will get to know uh, ourselves and actually be able to basically lean into what God has in store for us. You know, as Easter comes along, this is a great time to kind of do a personal revival and basically look in ourselves to make sure we're doing what God would have us to do. Hope you got something out of devotion. Hope to see you in church real soon.